Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. So today we'll be covering the concept of prevention. So the last session we had covered concept of causation. So how the disease is caused. We had covered all the theories and all the concepts. So now we'll be moving on to the concepts of prevention. How do we prevent a disease and what are the concepts available? On what levels we are going to prevent a particular disease? So that uh, we are going to see in this particular session. So just like Benjamin Franklin said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Always prevention is better than cure. So in our country, the third world countries or developing countries all, all may always keep on to the curative part rather than the preventive part. Curative part or curative medicine is always uh, very expensive. It might break the backbone of a uh, individual or a family. But the problem is the preventive side of medicine or preventive aspect is not much given importance in our country compared to the Western countries. So prevention is always better than cure. So what is prevention? Prevention, we know the word itself says pre-event action. It's just like stopping an action. Because the action of stopping something from happening. Okay. So we are going to prevent something. It's very simple as that. Prevent pre-event action. So we are going to prevent a certain action that might cause a disease. When we apply this to our disease prevention. Smoking causes lung cancer. So we are preventing an action of smoking. So that it won't result in lung cancer. So let's see what are the levels of prevention. So basically we have four levels. So we prevent diseases under this four level. That is primordial prevention, primary, secondary and tertiary. It depends on the complexity. If we see the disease, the disease is not yet occurred here. And tertiary prevention, the disease as shows is complete effect. Okay, so it is going by disease severity. So in true sense, we can say that primordial and primary are true sense of prevention. Because after primary prevention, the disease already are into action. So we are just limiting the or halting the progress of disease. In primordial and primary, the disease is not yet occurred. So we are preventing actually the disease. So let's move on to the primordial prevention. So primordial prevention is newly emerged concept of prevention. It is nothing but preventing the occurrence or preventing the occurrence of a habit or a risk factor. Just like uh, the smoking causes lung cancer, we are educating students or we are teaching some uh, young people that the smoking causes lung cancer so that they don't acquire this risk factor. That is primordial prevention. The primary prevention is different. Primary prevention is like the particular individual or a group of people is already having the habit but we are modifying the risk factor so that they won't get a lung cancer or they won't get a disease. Modifying the risk factor and preventing the occurrence of risk factor is different. So the primordial prevention is preventing the occurrence of a risk factor. How, we, uh, how do we do that? By establishing a social, economic and cultural pattern so that they won't have a habit at least. That is a risk factors. So that is primordial prevention. Primordial prevention is prevention in the very early stage. So we know that primordial prevention is just like uh, this is coronary heart disease or uh, arterial occlusion. So what we can do is we can prevent the intake of meats. We don't take meat at all or we teach the people not to use meat or red meat. Controlling the red meat is primary prevention, primary prevention, whereas abstinence, complete removal from the diet or complete removal of the risk factor is primordial prevention. So primary prevention, as I told you, the person is already having a habit or a risk factor for a particular disease. So it is by definition actions taken prior to the onset of disease. In primordial and primary disease is not yet occurred. So what all the actions we taken 
prior to the onset of disease which removes the possibility of that disease will never occur so suppose a person is under smoking he's been smoking for few months or few years so we are going to uh, give a tobacco cessation counseling he has not yet developed any disease or any lung cancer or anything so we are going to educate him we are going to modify his habit or a risk factor so that he won't get the disease that is primary prevention primary is we are educating the people not to smoke primary is we are modifying the smoking habit by educating So this is primary prevention and it will be always at the pre-pathogenesis phase of a disease. Natural history we have seen pre-pathogenesis and pathogenesis. Pre-pathogenesis we speak the disease is not yet occurred. The pathogen is not yet entered. The risk factor is not yet entered into the body. Or the particular person is not yet acquired the particular risk factor. So it is always at the pre-pathogenesis phase of a disease or a health problem. So we modify it, we uh, we educate, we modify it, uh, we promote health so that uh, the patient uh, will change the habit or reduce the habit or control the habit so that he won't acquire the disease. So it is all about a concept of positive health, this uh, primary prevention. So we can uh, just see that high serum cholesterol, you know, it causes coronary artery disease. So we ask them to control the uh, diet or we put them on a diet so we ask them to control his uh, consumption of red meat or any other oily stuff so the risk factor is controlled or modified so that he won't get the coronary artery disease so that is a primary prevention so it is also like quantums are preventing HIV infections and immunizations preventing uh, diseases like uh, polio uh, BCG vaccine, all the vaccination which we give to uh, children to prevent diseases, all are primary prevention. So there are basically two types of primary prevention, one is mass approach and high risk approach. That is one is group approach, population approach. We have to apply to a big group of people. We have to modify our decisions so that it will benefit a, a very large group of people that is mass approach high risk group strategies we have to focus on a very particularly uh, risk groups okay so population app strategies directed towards the whole population irrespective of the risk level so whole population it will apply directly to the uh, whole population just like the ads or the health education uh, videos we seen before the movies against uh, tobacco so it is applying to everyone, every group of individuals is seeing, kids, adults, males, females, everyone is seeing it. So that is a population strategy, just like a small level reduction in the blood pressure or a cholesterol level. It can reduce a incidence of coronary heart disease on a very large scale because we are applying it on a very group, big group of people. So if it has an, a, a very small effect, the outcome will be very drastic very big outcome will be there because it is applying on a very big group of population or a big uh, group of people so that is a uh, population strategy it might not be very effective but the next strategy will be effective that is high risk strategy we have to select the people with special risk or high risk example smoking cessation programs should be applied to smokers because we apply the population strategy on every people we apply it to people those who are not smoking uh, but it might not be effective they won't take it very uh, seriously but when we apply it to very special group those who are in need that is smoking cessation should be on smokers that is high risk strategy so population strategy and high risk strategy are part of primary prevention so next is secondary and tertiary the disease is already occurred now we are going to limit the uh, impact of this disease that is secondary and tertiary so secondary is just like halt the progress of a disease at the very early stage and prevent the complication so secondary stage just like if we take a dental caries dental caries is already occurred we are going to restore it and to get back to its function that is mastication that is secondary prevention 
we take dental caries primary prevention, we have to go for a fluoride therapy or pectin fissure resilience because the dental caries will not occur. Secondary prevention is like we are treating the disease. Primordial prevention the same scenario we apply. We are teaching the students or we are educating not to eat chocolates or to brush twice. That is primordial prevention. Can also come under primary prevention. So the risk factor modification and risk factor prevention is different primordial and primary. So but the secondary prevention is we are modifying the disease impact. So we are treating the disease or we are preventing the disease at a very early stage so that it won't get complicated and result in uh, more morbidity. So secondary prevention is uh, most commonly it's based on the natural history of disease. If the particular disease has very long natural history, we can uh, get the patient at a very early stage, just like uh, cancer treatment for a cancer patient. We catch the patient at a very early stage, we can reduce the uh, uh, complications and we can save the patient. So the tertiary prevention is like we are just disability limitation. The disease has caused its full impact. The tooth, dental caries has caused uh, the tooth destruction like tooth become non-vital the crown is completely destroyed so that you, you can't use it for the basic masticatory function so what you do you limit the disability and rehabilitate so you do pulp capping or root canal treatment and you rehabilitate with uh, partial danger uh, fix a partial danger crowns implants or other things so it is disability limitation and rehabilitation now prevention it's not at all a prevention in sets since we are treating all these under different different levels this is tertiary prevention so we can say that it is just a disability limitation and rehabilitation it is a measure to reduce or limit the impairment and disability and minimize the suffering so that is the tertiary prevention just like rehabilitation of patients with poliomyelitis, strokes, we are rehabilitating with equipments and blindness, injuries. So enabling them to take part in a social life, not in a regular way, but at least they can take part with the equipments or with the uh, rehabilitative measures we provide. So that is tertiary prevention. So this is uh, primary prevention, like uh, we are educating with signboards asking uh, to wear helmets so this is secondary prevention these two are primary prevention secondary prevention accident has already occurred these both are to prevent accident so these two are two components of primary prevention that is health education and specific protection this is secondary prevention accident occurred, but we are taking as early as possible and this is tertiary after the accident amputation of limb happened so we are replacing it and we are giving rehabilitation we are providing a wheelchair or any um, artificial like so that is tertiary prevention a social rehabilitation vocational and medical rehabilitation so the primary prevention is to teach them not to prevent not to have an accident secondary prevention they have accident but we take them as early as possible so that the complication will be less tertiary prevention it has full-on effect of complication and now we can't do anything now we just rehabilitate the patient so that's all about the prevention so primordial primary secondary and tertiary preventions so primary and primordial are true sense of prevention secondary and tertiary are the management of the disease complications so that's all about levels of prevention uh, next class i'll come up with uh, modes of intervention how do we apply this levels of prevention in practice so various methods in preventive measures. So that's all about levels of prevention. Thank you.